Did you enjoy the movie? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good. Uh, well, you're a husband and wife team, right? Uh, we are. Is this the first movie you worked on together? Uh, yes, it is. First movie you've ever written? Yes. Oh, no. 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 I have to turn it on. <laughs> it's the first movie I've ever written. <laughs> I don't know how to use microphones yet. All right, so tell me, um, well, first of all, what am I supposed to take away from the film? Oh. Yeah. Because I'm a little confused. <laughs> um, gosh, that's a tough question. I think what was most important to us was that there are so few stories told about women. Most of the stories that we have, both historically and cinematically, uh, theatrically, are either about men or told by men. And so we thought it was a really exciting opportunity for me as a woman to tell a, a, what is largely an untold story about women during war and what the experience is like for them. Uh. I mean, I, I, uh, I think more than anything, uh, I think it's an anti-war film in some ways. Um, I, I think that war is the, the villain of the picture. Um, but why put it in the Civil War? I mean, it could be any war. It could be any war, absolutely. As an American, I was really interested in this idea of, you know, I think in a lot of ways our country is in this kind of cold Civil War right and left, um, and so I think it's interesting to look at what our country was like when it was actively at war. Um, and so I was very fascinated by the idea of, as Jordan said, exploring kind of, you know, I'm from, I'm, I'm from the North and I have family from the South, um, sort of upending the traditional perspectives about who the good guys are and who the bad guys are in order to show that ultimately war is the bad guy. That's one answer to your question about the Civil War. Okay. The other is that it was literally inspired by a trip that we took to Georgia. We went to a family friend's family's pre-Civil uh, War farm, and there was a myth that came with the farm when they bought it, which was that there were two Union, unmarked graves of Union soldiers in the, in the goat field. And so I was specifically inspired by the Civil War, but then also found these themes very interesting in terms of what was going on with men and women at that time in our country and what's going on with men and women in our country today. Okay, what is the keeping room? What is the keeping room? The keeping room is the small structure that's separate from the house that the women spend, you know, that much of the film takes place in. And the keeping room was kind of the hearth of the home. And it was separated from the main house in order to prevent fire so that if there was a fire in the kitchen, it wouldn't burn down the whole house, which of course ends up being ironic <laughs> in the end of the film. Um, but also it ended up being the space in the house that was occupied by the women because it was the place where family gathered around the fire and the women cooked. It, it to me ultimately represented kind of the female heartbeat of the household, of the farm. And how long did it take you to write the film? Not that. Well, she wrote it quickly, um, but then there was a, a number of, uh, it took a, a bit to, to get it made, um, and in that process there was a number of rewrites, so it depends on what you sort of, you know, the first draft that but the first draft was out, pretty. I was, was a high was school. Relatively quickly. I was teaching high school when I wrote this, and I wrote it on my summer vacation. I wrote yeah, the first I, draft on my summer vacation, so a couple months. Yeah, I mean, the, the from a pure story place, the, the film's pretty simple. Uh, I mean, it's it's a it sort of um, abides by a number of horror tropes. Um, honestly, is sort of the backbone of it, uh, and. Um, it certainly doesn't reinvent the wheel in terms of story, but that was very intentional. Um, and it kind of, uh, the characters, I think, kind of wrote themselves for her. Um, and then we sort of refined stuff as we, as we went forward. There's not a lot of dialogue in many places. Is that intentional? I mean, you just wanted the characters, you know. Well, it's funny because my script is actually overflowing with dialogue. Um, and the director chose to sort of, I think I had maybe like three lines of action for that whole sequence, that whole silent sequence at the beginning. So he definitely interpreted what I imagine to be sort of briefer moments of that silence uh, and expanded them. So that's something interesting that happens in the process. You know, you, you don't necessarily know what is coming from the script and what's coming from production from the director.
So were you happy with how it turned out? Or did you watch the film and say, where's all my dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was, it's, it's true to the... Yeah, no, it's very picture, true to the, it's, it's very true to the script. There's a lot of things that are surprising about uh, that aren't surprising anymore, but they're, they're surprising. It's very true to the spirit of the film. Um, you know, we were, obviously, we, we were there and making it um, with the director, Daniel, but... I would say in particular, the thing that is most true to the script that I'm the most proud of when I watch it are the women's performances. Um, the way in which Muna Otaru and Britt Marling and Haley Steinfeld brought the women that I wrote to life is very, um, it's incredible to me to get to see how beautifully realized that is and how much that sort of started at a place for my imagination and then became theirs. And how did you get it made? I mean, what's the pitch to a studio or to... You know, it's interesting. People? It's interesting at the script level. Um, it was... I, I mean, it's it's a distinctive piece. You know, I, it's a very uh, divisive piece. It's been a bit, you know, it, it's... Um, people have very strong opinions about the film in one way or another. Um, and I think that was true about uh, the script as well. And... Um, it definitely, it kind of stood out being a, a female writer and three female characters in Civil War. And at the script level, it was um, it was much more of a horror film in some ways. Um, very like, on its surface, a horror film. I think the the ultimate, the, yeah, the, the became film became more, more of, like of a drama. drama yeah. um, it was much kind of it was rougher and Yeah, and I think that just kind of, in the, the marketplace in Hollywood, it. it just sort of became a, a thing. Um, and As you so, said, it was more of like a classic horror film. Exactly. Like it was inspired by like Night of the Living Dead um, and like early zombie films. Like John films. Carpenter films. Like the, yeah. the plot is essentially the plot of Halloween. You know, there, it, it's not that different from And it thing. definitely Again, it's different, developed more different. into a drama. Um, and so um, uh, it sort of stood out for that reason. Um, and it, it, because it was the first thing she wrote, she was a woman, there was a certain, um, there was a, people, people are, see heat in Hollywood sometimes, they kind of just go after things. Um, and it well, became and I, one and of you those. should explain what you mean by that, which is that like women, most of the scripts that we see in our business by women are romantic comedies. You know, there aren't many horror horror films or yeah. more so it became thrillers a thing. written uh, by women. At the script level, it kind of became a thing. And then uh, it was on um, this list of, of scripts that haven't gotten made called The Blacklist, mm -hmm. which is just a thing in Hollywood. And then um, we hear about the blacklist here all yeah, the time. Exactly. Really yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of films like this, get made yeah. off of the blacklist. It sort of yeah. brings certain well, a lot of, to attention. I think sort of the more interesting, complicated, difficult, yeah. artful films. Yeah, I mean, it's very. It's not big studio of, films of stuff outside the mainstream, and um, uh, and so off of that, it got a lot of attention, and then we started kind of putting the cast together and the director together, and it, it took about. Uh, a year and a half off of that to actually get it into production. But and tell yeah. people where you filmed the Civil we, War we shot horror in, movie. Yeah. <laughs> we shot in Romania um, for purely budgetary purposes. Um, and also, I, I mean, I think it looks beautiful. It has a there's a certain it's um, like a magical yeah, there's a desolate there's like it. a it's an emptiness and like a desolation to it that is both I think very true to the uh, topography of the South, but. Um, also very much, at least when I look at it, not the South. Um, and there's something, there for me there was something very um, odd about that, with, that works for the picture, so. Um, where did it open? Film festival? How did you do it? We premiered at the Toronto Film Festival, um, and then we played the London Film Festival, mm -hmm. and then I was just at Fantastic Fest in Austin. And I think it played some other smaller festivals. Yeah, it's, it's played a bunch of regional festivals and a bunch of other festivals internationally. But it, it premiered at Toronto and then was bought by Draft House off of that. Yeah. Uh, what's next for you? Um, I directed my... Is teaching so this, over? Teaching is over. Teaching is over. <laughs> I love, well, and now I just directed, a, and I we wrote and I directed a movie about a teacher. So it's not totally gone from my what's life. What's the name of it? It's called Miss Stevens. And it is a movie about a woman who, a teacher who's struggling in her personal life, who is tasked with taking a couple of her students to a drama competition. And the so just like the keeping. <laughs> yeah, very, very so different your movie. movies. Are, when you write movies, they're all going to be obviously a woman's movie, a woman's yeah. point of view. Yeah, <laughs> because nobody else is, so I have to keep doing it. <laughs> or there aren't there aren't right. many of us. You know, it's like this small club of women. Um, that I know in uh, in our industry, and so we all feel 
very passionately about continuing to tell stories about women. And Jordan, you produced the film and you're the husband. Was that tough? <laughs> I'm, well, you know, was it a 24 7 thing? I mean, does it and have we a have a, And we have a baby. Yeah, so. yeah, we, have a baby, we just yeah. figured we'd go. Okay, so everything. things are good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, things, things are good. Um, yeah, no, it is. I mean, it's, it's definitely like uh, the work life balance is, is <coughs> but it, we work well together. And um, he just wrapped a movie yesterday and we locked picture on the movie that I directed. Yeah. So we had a big week. So we were excited to. You have your own company, here. correct? That we, we have, yeah. yeah. What's the name of it? Original Headquarters. Original Headquarters. So you're going to yeah. keep working on films and films and films. Yeah. 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 Who has a question? <laughs> Sing it out, baby. So as a, a, as a couple working together, what, how do you figure out whose vision is right if you don't think? <laughs> oh, that's such a good question. That's a great question. <laughs> I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, I think you can always find a, a path to agreement if you're listening. And we've definitely never made a decision where one of us was like, I can't believe this is what we're doing, I totally disagree. Yeah. It usually comes, it starts that way sometimes. Oh yeah. But it, it, it always, sorry, I keep talking too closely into the mic. It always, we always find each other at the right answer. Yeah, eventually. it just takes some patience sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I think we always... Yeah, we always find a way into, it takes a minute to sometimes see why uh, either I think a thing or she thinks a thing. But I think it's important to never, if one of us like violently disagrees, we have to wait to make the decision. I don't yeah. think you can ever settle if one person feels very strongly And I also something. tend to be very decisive <laughs> and very fast about like... Very, and I'm very like, slow. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, like very, very quickly and de decisive and she tends to be a little more thoughtful. Um, but, you know, that, that it's an interesting dichotomy, but yeah. But you, while you were writing the film, did you like go into a room by yourself and... Do, but then at the end of the day, would you say to Jordan, you know, you want to look at this or... Did you wait until the movie was up, the film was up? Oh, no, no, no. I couldn't write without... We, we now write together. Our process has kind of evolved from him giving notes to us writing the script together. So it's, it's very much a, um, a collaboration from the, from, the, I, from the inception of the idea. I sometimes get so excited about ideas that I tell him like half an idea or like a character, and he's like, that's not a movie. <laughs> um, so we start very early on together and work very closely throughout the whole process. Great. Who has a question? Oh, lots of questions. Thanks. Uh, can can you give us a sense of the uh, the budget and uh, how uh, how long it took you to shoot and edit? Um, we shot the movie for um, uh, under five million. Um, it was a relatively low budget, um, well under five million, and. Um, uh, it took, we shot for 30 days in Romania. One of the best things about Romania is, uh, is you get a lot more time. Um, you have to work six day weeks. The, the work week for film crews in, uh, in Romania is six days, but we shot five six day weeks. Um, and uh, the one thing that independent film in the United States uh, doesn't give you is time. It's been really sucked uh, dry. Uh, most like independent films you see shot in 19, 20, 21, 22 days. So, um, yeah, having 30 days to shoot it was great, and also we were able to build everything to suit. We were very, uh, uh, we were very committed to, to to building the house and burning down the house um, in a real way. Um, and yeah, um, that they actually yeah. burned it and down, so, and we all watched it. It doing, was pretty incredible. Doing that in the U.S. would have cost a lot of money, um, and so we just sort of looked at Romania, and it it afforded us a lot of opportunities that we wouldn't have had here. Um, to make a film, you know, like this, which is so outside of uh, of sort of the mainstream stuff that, that gets made by studio. So, as an educator, my whole life, I have to ask you, what did you teach? <laughs> I taught eleventh and twelfth grade English. Oh, for... I was an English teacher my oh, whole really? life until oh, just wow. recently became an administrator. And I listened to this fine young man's uh, show every morning on my way to work. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, then I, I think you'll hopefully like the other film. What I the re, the one that I Miss Stevens that I that we made about a teacher because I felt frustrated by the representations of teachers on film 
it was always like the bad teacher or the sexy teacher and it never really felt like the real woman that I felt like I was as a teacher and all the complications and emotions therein. So hopefully you'll feel that it, it feels real. Well, Madison, thank you for calling me a fine young man. <laughs> now I'm thinking of becoming a teacher. <laughs> I'm just curious, were you in the movie business before this? Um, I, I have been in the movie business for a while. I made a, I produced a movie called The Kids Are All Right a couple years ago. Um, so you were a guy producer. Have seen. Yeah, I've been a producer for a while. He pulled me into the dark, onto the dark side of the film business from the important world of education. Yeah. <laughs> Could you <clears throat> tell me what is the significance of the title of the movie? Of The Keeping Room. Yeah. So, as I was saying, the, the keeping room is that small room that the women eat in and cook in and then ultimately heal each other in the middle of the night. Um, and then the room where uh, Augusta ultimately, you know, shows mercy on Moses and, and shoots him. And uh, the keeping room is the hearth of the homestead. It's where you cook and you eat and you talk and you drink. And so, to me, it was the very female center of... Uh, of the farmhouse and so for me the movie you know most war films are about the battlefield full of men and so for me this was the female side of war was was the heart and the center of the home full of women can you talk a little bit about the uh, casting I, I didn't recognize any of the actors and a little bit about the, one of the things that struck me was the sound well, the, it's really striking. the sound is this... Um, Glenn Freeman, who Mickey. won the Oscar for doing the sound design for Gravity. Yeah, so he's incredible. So we felt very lucky yeah. that he yeah. did our little movie because he's one of the best in the business. Yeah, so that's the sound. Um, and then the actors, uh, the lead actress is a woman named Britt Marling, who um, <clears throat> is sort of a... In, in the world of independent film, she's sort of a bigger name. She hasn't quite broken through. She's so. also a writer herself. Yeah, she she did a movie called Another Earth and another movie called The Sound of My Voice and, and a movie, movie called, called Arbitrage uh, that Richard Gere and Susan Sarandon were in. She was kind of one of the bigger ones. She was in that. Um, and The East. Uh, she's done a bunch of sort of lower budget independent films that have had you know some success here and there. So, um, and then Haley <coughs> Steinfeld was in True Grit. Um, when she was younger, she was she's probably and then Sam Worthington was in Avatar, um, yeah, yeah. so but Sam like very unrecognizable. Yeah, Sam's this, playing very much against I think against type. I actually prefer him in roles like this than in roles like Avatar, but that's that's just a matter of taste. So. Uh, I, I was very interested in the dynamic between the three women, particularly the the two white and the black. The you know first they they all ate together, mm -hmm. and then and then they. You know, they slapped each other. I mean, that was, you know, a really different kind of thing where the, the black woman who's a slave slaps the, you know, I mean, in that time. Did you do research and find evidence of that type of um, dynamic between people in general and women in particular? I'm glad that's what struck you about the movie because to me that was the most interesting thing in writing it was the dyna creating this dynamic between the three women. What I found to be sort of fascinating and devastating in my research is that there's so little that's documented about the female experience from that time. Um, there are some first person narratives but they're more, the easier ones to access are like the affluent white women who are living on plantations. The rural farm experience of both white and black women is very undocumented. And so I, you know, in, in the research that surrounded these women, um, mostly it's focused on Sherman's March. And uh, there's a debate about whether Sherman actually ordered his men to, you know, the, the tactic that is attributed to him, for those of you who don't know, is this idea that he created a total war, which is basically the way to bring an army down is to bring the civilians down and he basically whether you believe it or not I think this film <laughs> makes a pretty clear statement about the fact that he that he probably did do it he essentially ordered his men to go rape and pillage and destroy um, the women in the homes of these soldiers and that's what ultimately brought the south to its knees um, and so in in the research I did about the men I kind of had to invent what was you know there there are reports of some of the, the these men who lived and survived the war being brought to trial and Sherman kind of washing his hands and saying he told he didn't tell them to do any of that. Um, and so in the research I found about the men who had done those things or purportedly done those things, I started to invent what the women would have been like who they did that to. 
Um, and for me, this idea of these women who, this, the social structure, the very rigid social structure of master and slave dissolving around them as the men who created all of that were gone. I just thought it would be so much more interesting to imagine these women finding a way to their humanity instead of holding on to the structure that's, that's dissolved. What happens to them at the end? They, be, they dress as men because obviously they could do what they want as men back then. What happens to them? What you, You're the writer. What do you think happens to them? <laughs> what does happen to them? Um, I don't know. I was going, you wrote the movie. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I think people either see it as hopeful or I think there are some people who read it as optimistic that, you know, they've come this far, they're going to make it. And I think there are some people who see it as they're walking into, their death. you know, into their death. So I like leaving it open-ended for interpretation and, you okay. know, how I was optimistic, to be honest. I, I thought because they were so smart, they were so Don't smart to become men. <laughs> Uh, that they're gonna make well, that that's how you survive in that world, right. you know, and that's very that's a that's a very dark truth. But you know, I think these women are there were and there are actually there's documentation of women who dressed the only way they survived the war was because they dressed as men and they made it. They they were convincing, um, and so I think it, it even if you see it as you know hopeful, there's still a, a darkness to the fact that sure. the only way for them to survive is to to shed their gender. Talk to Bruce Jenner. Um, yeah. Yeah. You have a question? They, they, they seem to be heading in the direction from which the soldiers were coming. So my thought was that they were going to get beyond them. I like that thought. I'm going to go with that. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who has a question? Back there. She said her hand up. Uh, they're making me work to them. very much struck with the quote that you used at the beginning of the story and then you incorporated it into this dialogue of the story about the world being cruel, the war being the cruelest of all. And I uh, was wondering who wrote that quote and, uh, and has it been published any other place? So uh, the quote is from, uh, the, quote, the quote for those of you who don't remember is, uh, war is cruelty, there's no use reforming it, and the crueler it is, the sooner it will be over. And that was General Sherman, who all of those men were following, and that, that tactic I was talking about in terms of it being a order of war to destroy the civilization of the South and not just the soldiers. So that's, that was his philosophy. Um. And then I, I just kind of stole it and put it in the character's mouth because I thought it was so such an incredible line. Sorry. Um, I took a number of uh, courses uh, in screenwriting and acting at the University of Chicago. And when I moved out here to California at uh, University of California, Irvine, I went in a different direction. And after hearing you, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't pursue it. However, the one thing I learned is that um, when you write a script, um, you don't submit it to the producer <laughs> until uh, you have the final product. Is that pretty much what you did? <laughs> Can I take that? Uh, I'm gonna. I'm doing a, doing a little defensive producers here. <laughs> Unless um, you want me to do it. <laughs> well, no. Let me, let me let me start by saying that yes, I think there is a philosophy where people say that because there is an assumption that the producer is going to be the bad guy, destructive to your art. And I think that you know I I'm biased because I'm married to one, but there are some pretty extraordinary producers in the business who are your best support and your best champion. Um, I couldn't do any of this without mine, and I'm not just saying that because I'm married to him. My, my friend, who he created a TV show um, with this other writer whose wife told me that he told her that Jordan was his creative heartbeat. And that's his I'm talking about his producer, and that's a guy who's not married to him. So you can take his word for it if you don't want to take mine. But I think it's unfortunate that there are a lot of producers that do do what you're saying, and that there needs to be a defense against them. But I wish that the story that was out there was more this type of producer than that. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I view my job as getting the um, the getting people to work to their fullest potential. So, um, and that's not about. I, I try to be relatively egoless in the work that I do as a producer and make it about the work. Um, and there are definitely a lot of people that don't operate that way, but there are also a lot of us that do. So um, you just have to choose wisely. I just want to say a couple of things. First thing for my question is the acting was superb. Isn't it, it was amazing? It beautiful acting yeah. by those people I have never seen before. Oh, cool. Or just yeah. absolutely, you, whoever picked the cast was cool. wonderful. Thanks. Thanks. Good acting. Um, my question is, you know, I believe, <clears throat> normally I'm in the music business, so I, I produce and work in the music business, and my girlfriend, she's an the actress. Music producers have a much better rep than oh, film please. producers. <laughs> no, they, gen they genuinely do. <laughs> I think music producers have a much maybe better not, rep. Maybe not. Maybe, 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 I, I, maybe I, not in the music I'm business. I'm currently I working on, on, a, on a, a few things, a documentary. Yeah. I'm actually, go, I've got it. Everybody's gone nuts over my videography that I've been doing, so I started doing film. And I've been involved in trying to deal with this other producer who who's, has done, like mm -hmm. you, okay, and everything. And here, here's my question for you. Yeah. If, when you originally wrote your script, you probably did a treatment, I would imagine, right? How did you get the funding? Uh, for, for the, the film? Yeah, to get, who did you get? How it was, did you? It was, it was tough. Yeah. Because uh, we, made, we made it independent. I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, every film is, um, I, I've only made uh, original uh Movies. I've never done anything based on like a pre-existing material or anything, and I've, and I've only d the most recent film I did, the one that I just wrapped on Friday, is the first movie I've made at a studio. But that's with a, a filmmaker who's uh, who made this film called Whiplash that uh, was very successful last year, and so he suddenly became a, a very big director and had a lot of heat, and so we got that movie made at a studio. Um, it's very complicated to make sort of challenging original stories. Um, this was made through a combination of international money, um, through a foreign sales company, and then a domestic company mm -hmm. in the U.S. who um, put up, you know, a, a, a part of the budget as well. Because they like um, the treatment. No, they like the script. The script so we had the script, script, and the director and Britt Marling was attached. Okay. Oh no, no, she wasn't. No, Haley was. Haley was attached. Um, yeah, the, the cast changed a couple times, but um, you basically either get your financing because people love the story mm -hmm. or because you have certain actors mm -hmm. attached yeah. to it but yeah. it's, I mean, not, it's was... not that simple obviously but those are the two things I yeah. would say yeah yeah it's uh, movie, yeah. and it's different for every movie hi um, there seems to be a trend right now of, of apocalyptic films and I just love that that part in the film where she, they were saying is it the end of the world mm -hmm. and how um, we may not look at in the Civil War as that from their point of view that they may have thought of thought that and I was just wondering were was that an intentional thing that you did in your script that you wanted to put it put a that totally, scene in there because I feel like most post apocalyptic movies are set in some type of either super future or some type of present that you then assume the world ends after this apocalypse and so I thought it would be so because I sort of feel like we always think the world is ending like every generation always thinks the world is right. ending for one reason or another and so I thought, how fascinating to like take this idea of the post-apocalyptic story and set it in the past, and still make the audience feel like, at least I hope, feel like, yeah, I like is that. this the end of the and world? And there was there was actually even more of that at the script level when it mm -hmm. was more of a clear, I don't want to say yeah, horror last, film or genre yeah. film. The last line of the script was the soldiers move over the land like zombies. Yeah. So it was definitely it was much very more much, explicit. Yeah, it was explicitly post-apocalyptic horror uh, right. on the page. Yeah. Well, now that you have the film out, will this open doors for you in Hollywood? Oh my God, it already has. It's the script <laughs> opened a lot of doors. Okay. Um, and, you know, we then made, uh, well, we just made recently made Miss Stevens, the, the film she made. Um, and and when will we see that? When will that come Miss out? Stevens, we just finished, so that'll be, that'll play festivals next year. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, the script opened a lot of doors as a for her as a writer, um, just as, as a writer for hire, as a working screenwriter. I mean, the fact that she's no longer a teacher and makes a living as a writer full-time, you know, that's an open door enough. Well, I think the teaching profession lost a good teacher, I bet. Thank they you. Did. Yeah. They did. They, they did. But Holly, yeah, should, sure. should we say Hollywood got a good writer? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? So do you know what you're going to write next, since you just finished one film? I'm writing... Um, which I'm really excited about, a miniseries for HBO right now with uh, Anna Paquin and Jack Black wow. that I'm really excited about. Does it have a name? We it's called Madam X. 
Very good. Well, HBO is very safe. Last question back here. No, wait, 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 wait. We want everybody to hear you. Sing it out, baby. Um, I just wanted to say I was totally riveted. It was just mesmerizing and Thank such you. tension and anxiety it produced. Um, I just thought it was wonderful, and I love it that it was about the women's point of view because I'd never even thought about that before, but it made it so personal what war can really mean. And um, I just more power to you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Well, what would you like to say to close? Because we, we can't just, have that. I know. We <laughs> just, we, you, you, you can never hear that enough. It means a lot. And thank yeah. you all for sticking around to hear us talk. Yeah, it, this was a really, really challenging a movie to get made um, in the system. And just the fact that you, know, you guys are here to see it in Palm Desert is pretty, pretty awesome to us. Because, yeah, uh, it was a hard one. <laughs> so thank you. Thank Let's you so much.